The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. It would not be the month of June without conservatives coming out of the closet and letting everyone know how proud they are not to be straight, but to be bigots. And how proud they are of having this area in their life for which they are able to express a deeply seated hatred. Whether they got, I don't care what they call it. They could call it, oh, God, God loves you, but hates your sin. They could, they could wrap it into that. They can wrap it in whatever logical or illogical justification that they try to write around. But the bottom line is there is a place in the heart of every religious zealot and conservative who looks at the LGBTQ community and looks particularly at this month and says, we cannot possibly allow them to celebrate themselves without us registering our objection and without us filing our objection publicly. Because if we do, then somehow, somehow we're guilty of something. I, I don't know because they do have the option. Franklin Graham, uh, Matt Walsh over at uh, the Daily Wire, um, uh, everyone in, in between Tommy, Tammy, Lorenja, Tammy, Lauren, Tommy, Lauren, whatever. Everyone ha- all between all of those people, they have the option of just being quiet. That's 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 an option. But no, they can't just be quiet and have their personal beliefs. What they have to do is. Let the nation know and let the world know that they don't approve of the lifestyles of the LGBTQIA community. And they certainly don't agree that they should be proud and be marching. And they certainly don't agree that there should be an expansion of rights in this country for the LGBTQ community. Now, those of you who have followed me for some time, you know my backstory. You know, I am. I'm still religious. I'm still. I mean, heck, I led praise and worship at church yesterday. Yeah, I got to forgive me if I cuss today and you heard me leading praise and worship yesterday. Just know um, I'm complex like that. I was going to say God's not through with me, but that's 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 probably a lie too. God's probably done with me. (laughs) I'm, I'm just complex. But the fact is, is that I come from a very conservative religious background but I was never an evangelical. I come from the black. See, there's this, there's this wonderful, there's this wonderful tension. And I say it's wonderful, but it's really not wonderful if you don't get out of it. But there's this tension that exists when you are a black religious person. And the tension exists in that you're fighting and you understand your religious perspective from the perspective, from the perspective of liberation, right? You understand your entire experience with God and the Bible and religion as being one of set my people free, let my people go the God of justice because black people were oppressed in this country. And still, if you've seen the recent police videos, you understand there's still a level of oppression that comes, but there's this, there's this, there's this, there's this wonderful tension that, that exists. If you actually seize upon the opportunity to mature, I have to give that context. If you seize upon the opportunity to mature, there's this wonderful tension that exists where you have to look at yourself and say, self, how can I look at the God of liberation and justice for me and then turn around and be the oppressor for them? Right. How can I need how can I need deliverance from Pharaoh from the Pharaoh of white supremacy and then turn around and myself be the black Pharaoh of homophobia? I've already church is dismissed. I've already said everything that I need to say. If you if you're willing to if you're willing to mature. As a black person who grew up in extremely conservative surroundings and you ask yourself that question, you realize something you can't. You cannot reasonably explain why you would use your faith and your religion to help set you free from the slavery of white supremacy in this country, from the oppression of white supremacy in this country and not turn around or rather and then turn around and become the pharaoh of homophobia and then become the oppressor yourself. You can't. 
But what happens for some folks, and I'm going off on a long tangent here, early, very early on. But but what happens for some folks is that they would rather relinquish the claim to liberation, to the liberation gospel, to to Christ setting us free from not sin, but from physical, from not only sin, but from physical oppression here on earth. They'd rather get rid of all of that just so that they can serve as the oppressor and the uh, 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 the accuser of the LGBTQ community. And that's the background that I come from. So I understand this very closely and very intimately the role that, that there is, there is something. And, and I guess, I guess we could research this. I guess there's the language for this. There's this clearly language for this that I don't have. I could just describe it. There's clearly something that happens in the minds and the emotions of people that gives them a sense of superiority superiority when they have the ability to condemn somebody else. It's a part of human nature. And when you stand in that seat of perdition, when you stand and st- sit in that seat as an accuser, it gives you some self, some sense of self-righteousness. It makes you, it, it gives you some kind of, some type of, uh, 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 some type of hormones are firing off in your brain. Some sense of satisfa- satisfaction occurs. And that is quite literally what we are experiencing this month as every Tom, Dick and, and, and hypocrite is jumping up to try to slap down the celebration of LGBT pride month. Like you have the option of saying nothing. So what you, whatever you believe, nobody's going to stop you from believing what you want to believe, but you feel it. You take it upon yourself to write. Let's go. Let's, let's get to something specific. Matt Walsh of the daily wire. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about him first since, since he's apparently somebody that conservatives listen to. He said, Walsh, um, this is his article. LGT people are not oppressed or persecuted in this country. Here's how we know. Well, can I can I tell you the I mean, how many transgender women have been murdered in this country? Sure, sure, there's sure, sure. There are distinct differences in the fight for civil rights and the fight for LGBTQ rights, because there is this intersection of 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 white cis men, cisgendered men who who for for all intents and purposes, even if they're gay, they have opportunities that others do not have period right and 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 of course there are voices from the lgbtq community who can expound on that far greater than i ever could but the fact of the matter is that like there's there's lgbt violence there's violence against the lgbtq community that occurs every single day there's still states where it's legal to discriminate against in employment for lgbtq uh, uh 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 people individuals you have legislation that is attempting to give doctors the ability to refuse service to an LGBTQ individual because of religious beliefs. I mean, shall we go on? We have a push against the ability for an LGBTQ couple to get married and have access to the same boring, mundane things that I have access to with my wife. That are boring and mundane to me, but extremely significant to them because it's been withheld from them for, well, ever. Until uh, Oberfeld versus Hodges. And so, so there's clearly, and they know this, right? I, I mean, to take the time to explain it seems ridiculous on my part, uh, but but it's also my job because for some of you who don't have the time or the energy um, or the ability to debunk and to uh, refute this stuff, that's why you you know that's why you support me for me to go do it. So let me hush and do my job. It's 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 inanely ridiculous for individuals to look at the LGBTQ community in this country and to believe that they do not have number one, a fight on their hands still to this day. I get it. I, I, I definitely get it. I mean, you could look at some, some of the most successful men in this country are, are cisgendered white male and they're gay. I get it. 
But that does not end it. That, that's not the totality of the LGBTQ community. And y'all know this, like, this is not, this is not. So anyway, let me, let me keep, let me, let me just keep going with this. There, he, he also, Matt Walsh had another article um, where he said, um, if a straight pride parade is stupid, so is a gay pride parade. And there was one particular line in here um, that I, a, a passage that was actually worth uh, discussing because of how ridiculous it was. This is the, this is what passes for logic. Walsh said this, quote, it is argued that the real purpose of a gay pride parade is to resist and protest the persecution of homosexuals. Heterosexuals are not persecuted for being heterosexuals, so the argument goes, and therefore a heterosexual parade is pointless. But if that's the point of a pride parade, then why do they call it a pride parade? If it's really a protest, then call it a protest. What difference does it make, Matt? You're such an idiot. Or a rally call it a protest or call it a rally or a demonstration and in that case why do they hold these protests in places like san francisco and los angeles rather than tehran or riyadh it seems that these pride parades are held in precisely the places where gays are not persecuted oh man if this is the best the right can do here here's the thing like on on a tangent this is the best the right can do but it's enough because they put millions of dollars behind promoting this. And, you know, and if you really want to see why the right is, has always been bereft of good intellectual arguments, uh, go back to the debate between James Baldwin and um, William F. Buckley and see how profound of an argument um, James Baldwin presented. And they were debating it in, at Cambridge University. Um, and then then. James uh, uh, William F. Buckley came up behind him and you're like, really, is this the is this your king? Is this your intellectual king? And I say the same, like is Ben Shapiro, really your intellectual and, and Matt Walsh, um, Ross Dothat or whatever his name is. The, those really. But anyway, well, back to the point. The point is this passage is absolutely ridiculous. It is argued that the real purposes of, of gay pride parade is to resist the protest and pro- prosecution persecution of homosexuals. Heterosexuals are not persecuted, therefore, uh, being uh, so the argument goes, and therefore a heterosexual parade is pointless. Well, yeah, that's the most obvious part of it, but there's more. There's more to it. It's not just about the persecution. It's not just about the physical persecution, which actually still takes place. If you look at the numbers and you look at the hate crimes against the LGBTQ community. But beyond that, this is what they want to strip you of. Right. This this is what they want to strip black people of the ability to be proud of who we are in a nation that spent centuries telling us that we were not worth anything. Being proud to be black, black pride is uniquely different and acceptable because of the treatment of blackness in this country for centuries. For centuries, we were told that we were nothing, not only just verbally told that, but institutionally told that we were criminalized. We were dehumanized. We were vilified. Each of those means something totally different, but we were vilified for the purposes of making the masses fear us. And that fear of blackness seeped into our own souls. That hatred of how we looked. We were told that we were ugly. We were told that our noses were too wide. We were told that our hair was too kinky, even though our hair being as strong as it was, was actually something to behold and something significant We were told that we were nothing. And so we had to assert for our own self-worth, our pride. So, so, So saying black pride is uniquely different than saying white pride. Saying black power is uniquely different when you are a people who were stripped of power, not only stripped of power, but kept powerless for centuries. Similarly, while there are differences, but very similarly, you have, you have, oh my God, you have so many, so many gay and lesbian, transgender, I mean, I was going to say teens, but also adults whose entire lives 
have been riddled with with shame because of their surroundings, because of the people around them, because they couldn't come out to their parents, because they couldn't come out to their friends because they would get beat up at school, uh, the, you know, because they, 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 their grandparents, you know, shamed them because of their religion and, and they were told that they were going to hell and they were re relinquished like they would, their parents would have just rather they had kept it to themselves. And because they grew up like that, it is, it is essential that they are able to look at themselves in the mirror with pride and say, I am proud to be who I am, how I am, the way that I am, and love the way that I love. It is so critical. Well, Ben, what you, you know, if your son was gay, I would, I would want my son to be proud of who he is. Do you know? See, this is the thing. All of you, all of you who have been so quote unquote blessed to not be anything different than the accepted norm in America have no idea what it's like to be rejected. No idea whatsoever. If, 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 if you grew up white, wealthy, relatively attractive, tall, straight, and Christian, then you have absolutely no idea what it's like to be rejected outside of us telling you to leave us the hell alone. See, that's, that's the persecution for Christians, for that group, for that group of white Christian men who run the country, like Bill O'Reilly said, America's run by white Christian men. Outside, you know, what, what, is, what is oppression for them is when we tell them you can no longer oppress us. That's oppression for them. When the oppressor can no longer be the oppressed, when the oppressor can no longer oppress, they feel as though they are oppressed. But for the rest of us, our entire lives have been riddled with rejection and trying to find a way to accept ourselves in a, in a nation, in a society that constantly, constantly tells us that we are worthless and beyond worthless, that, that like, if you're gay, then you're going to hell. And so it's intentionally, it's, it's them intentionally being obtuse and they are not going to change their mind. I'm not giving, I'm not giving these arguments for the sake of them changing their minds because they are doing this intentionally. I'm speaking to, I'm speaking to whoever's listening to me that reads or come across these headlines and they're troubled by these headlines because you may not have the ver the, the verbiage to actually refute this, or you may be in a situation where you don't have the time to actually break this apart. But the fact of the matter is you have every right to be proud of who you are and so what if a straight person is like well I have the right to be let's have a straight let's have a straight pride parade fine go go be whack on your own <laughs> that's fine go be a cornball all by yourself but you never had anyone tell you that there's something wrong with you because you're straight. You never had rights withheld from you because you were straight. You were never told that you were going to hell because you were straight. You were never told to keep it to yourself because you were straight. You were never told that you couldn't have public displays of affections because you were straight. You were never told that you cannot adopt children because you were straight. You were never told that you couldn't go visit your loved one in the hospital because you were straight. You were never told any of these things because you were straight so if you still feel the need to go and have a straight pride parade then by all means baby go and be whack all by yourself go and feel self-oppressed all by yourself but for everyone else who has historically been rejected and told that they were nothing and told that they could not love they had to I, I don't even have to do for all for every one of you who has gone through that man go out there and celebrate you go out there and be as proud as you want because let me let me it's just on a personal note on a, on a very 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 personal note do you know i know you know but i just have to pose it as a question do you know how hard it is to find love in the first place 
and then find love that actually loves you the way that you need to be loved <laughs> you know how absolutely difficult and and really probably the odds are not in your favor of finding that kind of love and so like when I see people genuinely happy I mean I could have said the same thing about just happiness like internal happiness and internal peace like like do you know how hard it is to just be happy with yourself <laughs> shit that is that is the hardest thing in the world and so when I personally see somebody happy and loved how could you how could you expend energy trying to destroy that no matter what your religion taught you when you grew up do you know how hard it is to find that kind of love being a saved straight man or woman Yes, you probably do. You're probably miserable. That's why you don't want anyone else to find that love because you can't find it yourself because it's so improbable. And then you see, uh, like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that just, that just as many trifling and scandalous and horrible relationships that take place in the LGBTQ community as it is in the straight community, but in terms of marriage, the straights, we're not doing that good. We're not doing that good. So when I see people who actually are in love, like, man, I don't, I do not care. One, because it's none of my business. But two, because I know how difficult it is to find. And I know how difficult it is to just be happy with oneself. And so that's why, that, especially in a society that has been uniquely programmed to make you hate yourself and so while Matt Walsh's little little rant uh, is riddled with illogical in, well logical inconsistencies um, and fallacies the fact of the matter is it's like what type of what type of soulless miserable empty shell of a human being do you have to be to take issue with people finally finding a voice to be proud of themselves and a way to express that and to accept themselves in a society that has constantly told them not to like themselves and I don't care how successful the most successful gay straight cis man is white man is there's still that teenage transgender girl who is fighting the fight of her life just to find a sense of joy within herself. And that story replicates itself around the country every damn hour. So while we can compare and say, hey, it's not that bad for you to be a, a, a straight white man. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not that bad for you to be a, 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 a gay but cisgendered white man. It's not that difficult in America right now. But that's not, I mean, you just completely erased everybody else who do not have the privileges. And, and then you, oh my God, forgive me for forgetting perhaps one of the most important intersections here which is which is poverty and 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 the and the, not only the poverty of of young people growing up impoverished and trying to find some sense of identity with their sexuality but also the poverty that is almost is institutionalized when you're a, 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 a person of color who is LGBTQ. But the bottom line, the, oh God, the bottom line, the bottom line is, is that 
It's just what miserable people you have to be to expend your energy telling people who are in the fight of their lives personally and collectively yes but personally you know how many teens cannot come out to their parents because they fear their parents are going to beat them or or ostracize them or excommunicate them from their church and so anyway um in terms of the argument and 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 there is no argument but in terms of just having the vocabulary to push back against these 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 evil people um i want to read one la- the the last part of this paragraph from matt walsh uh he said quote and in that case why don't why do they hold these quote unquote protests in places like san francisco and los angeles rather than in tehran or riyadh it seems that these pride parades are held in precisely the places where gays are not persecuted okay so just just for your knowledge sake you know this is a classical or classic fallacy but also a standard debate debate tactic that's used by the left and the right it's called to 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 quote we it's a difficult word to say but it's basically um it's 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 a way of deflecting it's a whataboutism is the easiest way this is the easiest way to understand this where he's saying like what about the, what's going on <laughs> what about what's going on in the middle east where where you could literally be killed for being gay and yes you can literally be killed uh by the government state state sanctioned murder because you are gay but i i mean the cla- the, the response to this clearly is is that what happens there does not uh eliminate the reality of what's happening here yes they do have state sanctioned murder there but we have non-state sanctioned murdered he- murder here right the level of oppression there does not invalidate the level of oppression here and this is a classic tactic to just try to make you say that it's not that this simply should not happen here it is a classic tool of oppressors to say we don't really treat you that bad here in the states because look at how bad they treat them over there just like a plantation master would say well i'm not really the worst i i only give you one lash versus the the master down the road who beats his slaves into one inch of their life i mean you know, surely you should be okay with being a slave on my plantation. It's a classic what about ism and it's 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 as fatuous as it is soulless. Man, I feel bad for these people in a way. They're just miserable. Um anyway, Donald Trump has um told all of the told all of the embassies across the nation all around the world to not fly the um the pride uh flag during this month and franklin Graham, Graham is exceedingly excited about that because um he's dedicated his life he's dedicated his life to making the life of the lgbtq community miserable because that's what apparently you do i i I don't that that's what you that's what you do when you're a religious bigot. I don't really have much more to say about this. I'm 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 done. I'm done. I was going to I was going to go in on Franklin Graham, but I don't think there's any need to because he's Franklin Graham. But I just want to say this is 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 um I get ready to do some videos. Um I'll try to get some videos out tonight. But but the 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 fact of the matter is is, is as I have already stated This country, its baseline, the default position of what's acceptable and traditional served only white Christian men, straight men, and it has embedded in it for centuries the hatred and the dehumanization of every marginalized group 
to greater and lesser extents. Yes, there are differences in our fight. Yes, but one thing that we have in common is that we're fighting against the power structure of white Christian straight men and all of their machinations to maintain that power hold. Not just their current machinations, but all of the things that they've done over the centuries to instill fear in the hearts of Americans. The fear of blackness being probably their greatest work. The just the the the, the standard acceptance of how of of how people are inherently terrified of black people in general, black men specifically is a is a handiwork of white supremacy. This 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 fear of Islam embedded into our society. Masterfully so. I mean just the fear and the otherfication of 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 Muslims is astounding in this country. And similarly, the otherfication and the fear and the and the and the desire for them to just go and, and go back into your closet and just don't say anything about it. And don't be pr- above all else, LGBTQ community, the starting default position in this country, the power structure in this country of white Christian straight men. They above all else, they just don't want you to be proud of who you, they would. If you're going to be gay, they want you to be ashamed of being gay. That's the only kind of gays they like. Those who are ashamed and 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 want to go through conversion therapy and and uh. And so while our fights are different, and while at times we find ourselves at odds with each other because of those differences, one thing is certain we are all in a fight for liberation from the same Pharaoh, the same people who control this power structure. The same people who think that they have the right to define what is traditional and normal. Those same people are the people who benefit from they may not have they, they're not they weren't here at the founding of the country. So, of course, they did not institute the vilification of black people, but they still are byproducts. They're still beneficiaries of the system that vilified black people. Islam, brown people, immigrants, and the LGBTQ community. That's reality. We have our differences. We, 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 and, 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 and one, one, one other minor, but major detail. And I'm, I'm saying this particularly, I, 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 this is another tangent at the end of the show. I'm getting ready to cut the microphone off, but I got to say this. I've said a couple of things today with the mindset of speaking to the homophobic black community, the black community that is still homophobic. But y'all do realize there are plenty of black gay people, right? You do realize that there are plenty of our cousins in them that are at the reunion with us playing spades with us that are just as gay as anybody. I mean, you do know you have gay family members, black folks, right? I just wanted to check just like there are black immigrants, black folks, right? Because there, I, I just have to put that at the end because I don't think I said anything about that through the entire show. And I gave a couple of disclaimers and a couple of caveats rather uh, uh, to, as a nod to them saying that, yeah, there are differences in the fight, but do realize that there are black gay people, black immigrants. I'm getting ready to go into a whole nother up episode talking about the ridiculousness of certain movements that reject black gay people and reject black immigrants. Ah, but that's an entirely different episode. Listen, I just want to tell you that um, you be proud of who you are. You fought for the longest and the hardest to accept you. And if you are in a place where you genuinely love yourself and you love yourself with the kind of love that can survive this atrocious society that was tried to strip everything away from you at every chance that it gets 
It's going to try to strip your confidence away from you. It's going to try to strip your your value, your self-worth and your physical material worth from you. It's going to do it. But if you love yourself enough to survive that. Then get out in those streets. Put on whatever the hell you want to put on. Wrap yourself in your flag and go out there and celebrate that. That is what you have to be proud of because that is a major accomplishment in a society that has been designed to tell you that you're nothing, to discover yourself and then to accept yourself and then to be proud of yourself in the face of that is the greatest accomplishment of your life. Now go out there and be proud and you better be fabulous. Love you guys. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Thank you.